know. I think I like the I like I find a lot of my favorite quotes from uh, like the music I listen to. Okay. So um, there's so a lot. Clearly, Cuddy. Oh no, I don't know if one of my favorite quotes is by him, but I think a lot of his music like. I feel like I could like write the same type of music, like, but not necessarily the quotes don't like jump out at me. Like one of my favorite lines is uh, "Apply yourself to supply your wealth." Like at the end of um, "Poem and Dreams," when he sent, when the uh, GLC talks, like that whole little monologue is dope. I like uh, when he says "Apply yourself to supply your wealth" because what is that section eighty? Yeah, section eighty. His okay. first album. Um, just for me, like that just like. It, I mean, it says so much and it rhymes. It's like, oh, apply oh, yourself, oh, apply oh, your wealth, do work. So that's really funny because, like, one of the questions that I was supposed to ask you is, which, who do you like better, um, Shel Silverstein or Dr. Seuss? And you were just talking about rhymes. Like, who oh, you? rhyming. Uh, I would say Shel Silverstein because um, when I was a kid, I remember reading like I read all the Dr. Seuss books and they were good, but. The first time I read like uh, Where the Sidewalk Ends or like, um, like what's the green book? Uh, the, you know what I'm talking about? What's that called? Uh, the, oh, okay, whatever. But like, yeah, his 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 poetry really was more for like it, it was it was a different type. Like it wasn't Dr. Seuss was very like fun and like colorful and kind of like childish and had like you know deeper meanings. But Shel so, Silverstein stuff felt like uh, it was like just real like imagination just like from a normal person there was it was less less uh create like it was less fantasy you know what i mean like dr seuss's work was so you're all saying fantasy. you were like a 30 year old grown man no no it's not child. not like you couldn't was, dream like no it was just more realistic like i could relate to it more i wasn't relating to loraxes and who's necessarily like i wasn't learning my lessons that way from like yeah like flowers speaking and shit like that it is cold outside. My back is not warm. What should I do? What's, what's a cool uh, scent? Window, window pose. This is for me though. No, that's actually great. Like this? What are you looking at, huh? I'm looking, I'm looking at this <laughs> what dust looking at? nigga. <laughs> what's the commercial song called? Is that, isn't some, it? That's what's called? Looking, looking at nigga. She's nigga. such a disgrace. So, when was the first time you really felt that you were doing something that was creative and you actually felt like, oh, I'm inspired, let me draw, let me paint? Um, for some I was like really inspired. Maybe, uh, I don't know, I've been drawing my whole life. I'm trying to think where I really just got like... Maybe when I was, uh, in, oh, like elementary school, we had like some project and, um, it was like a group project and I did it with like two friends and it was about like something about like it's a world peace like make a poster about world peace something like that and I was like with my friends like hey let's, let's, let's make this poster and like win the contest or some shit so I did it and I ended up doing the whole poster and then like but it was just because I felt like it was like okay like I know I can draw I know I can do this with like these markers and crayons and like <laughs> with this, this poster board like I can do work I can win this contest and like I can do it with my friends it would be fun and I ended up not getting any help and like had to share the credit but that was the first time I felt like inspired I guess but still have it it's no nah, I don't have it it's only a vivid memory because of the bitterness of not getting all my credit but <laughs> that might have been the first memory I have of uh, like being inspired I definitely was inspired by like the contest and the concept of like uh, depicting an image of like world peace and I think I was like in third grade or something like that but I more so remember it because I like you didn't get your credit I didn't get what like, I deserved <laughs> do you want to shout them out do you want nah it's cool they're the homies they're the like, homies <laughs> cool. are you sure I don't this, is it. this is it they won't this is really. your chance they might not remember. okay it was I gave you a chance to back in Ohio okay well so how was it growing up in Cleveland like how was the switch from Cleveland to Jersey. Uh, it's it's much faster paced. Like Cleveland is cool. Um, it's a city. Like you know, as compared to where I moved here, it's more of like a town. It's like the outskirts. It's it's a like we live in greater like New York City, basically like outside of the city. And um, not to say that I like grew up in the city of Cleveland, but I was more around like it was easier to see like the to go from like suburb to city in somewhere like Ohio as it is. To here like we're surrounded by like a lot of more places that are just like how where we live you know like there's Maplewood, South Lawrence, Summit, Livingston they're all pretty much the same type of like suburban living and uh, in Cleveland there were different types of like uh it's all the different like suburbs and places had different types of fields it's a lot of places here kind of feel similar at times in more ways than others but um I 
came from a place called Shaker, which is a lot like Maple Woods South Orange, Shaker Heights, Ohio. Um, the high schools, Columbia and Shaker, are really similar. Like the teachers, the type of kids, the demographics of the town is really the same. And uh, it was a pretty easy transition, I think, in terms of like the type of people. But being so close to New York City was like, um, it's like magic to me. Like I had this whole, uh, the whole world was like a train ride away. So like when I met kids, they would be like. Oh yeah, we go to the city after school for fun. I'm like, that's something I would go back to Cleveland and brag about for like a year. And people would like be like, damn, that's crazy. Like you went to New York, like just some shit like that. You're designing right now. What are you yeah. thinking that your customer is listening to? What is what is um, person doing for fun? I mean, I don't know. Like the direction I've taken recently, I guess the whole like me taking it all really seriously and like. Um, you know, this is who I am now. Like I, I spent a lot of time not making stuff because I cared about questions like that. Like, what did, what is the person that's buying my clothes doing? Like, what do they like? So I would focus on my efforts on making clothes for other people. Like, I would in high school I would just draw stuff that would be really cool. But if 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 like too many people said like, oh I don't know or like we're un or if people I just would not make it just because like I didn't think they would like it. But I realize now that like making stuff for myself is what that's like it doesn't matter if people like it you know it's like if I made it then it's made and like you can I, I can see the progression in myself not the progression in how I know how to handle people's opinions my new stuff is more focused on just shit that I like but. so it's more you're the main customer yeah the, the, it's, I mean it's stuff you want to wear and stuff you want to yeah for the last shirt it was just like like this is this is how I draw like, how I've been this type of stuff I've been doing lately and I just took that and I was like I need to take infinity and like my art and put them together and that's what I got and I was like this is cool I might as well wear it and so I mean a new shirt idea for infinity obviously like for myself obviously comes for everyone else so I made it made the shirt but if no one bought it I would have been fine with the shirt that I got I would say the community is supportive more than I would I would use the word community more than the word friend. Um, only because uh, I am like I know so many people. I don't I, I'm getting to the point in life where like that word I don't use that word as loosely just because like people come and go in life and like I I'd like to like reserve that word I guess just for people that like actually were there like my parents you know seen the first shirts to the last ones, but there's some people that, you know, been around for, like, that part of the, my part of the life where I was making certain stuff, and, like, I don't really see them much around anymore. It's not that they don't support me, but they might not have been as supportive when I first started. It's just, it's just cause, like, yeah, it's a different relationship, so, like, but with that said, like, I'm not gonna, like, throw the word friend around for everybody, because some people didn't support me when I started. It's not many people, but it was, like, it happened. It's all like, they're all like uh, extensions of myself, me, like, I guess, uh, they're all forms of expression, I guess, or I'd like to think of them that way, like, but I started Infinity more on like a business end as opposed to a creative end, so that's why I, I'm so like excited about um, Infinity in general now because I have like, it's more of an expression for me, I mean, it, before it was more of a logistical thing, like it was like, I tried to make my art logistics, which is, um, it wasn't a good thing, but it worked, it worked for you know, however many years until I turned around. But uh, I would say I relate more to like pure expression just like anybody else would, like um, whatever that means, like if I'm drawing or painting or making 
something on the computer, I think that that's what I like. That's what it is for me. Like the core of it is just like expressing something, like uh, communicating an, an idea. Is what it so, is. what is the most beautiful thing in the world to you? Like being passionate about something is like beautiful. Like when I'm like in a room with my friends and we all like are doing something. Like right now, like this is beautiful to me. Like I'll like I don't forget things like this as opposed to um, like seeing like a hot girl on the street in New York. Like when that happens, I'm like. She's beautiful, but I'm, I'm never gonna see her again. But I'll see another girl next time that'll look way better than her. Like so, it's like that's beauty, but it's like it comes and it goes. Like that's like natural beauty, but the type of stuff like people are passionate about something like making something out of nothing. That's like beautiful. It's like I can't even articulate the words to express like how I feel about that. But that's like something genuine. Like you can't see it. It comes from the mind. Like taking a um, like white piece of paper and making something beautiful out of it. Like taking something from nothing to do. And I think that the fact that humans can do shit like that is like, is awesome. Like that's like, that's beautiful to me. So that's the type of stuff that I like, if I could change something about the world, I guess it's people like express more. I think that it'd be nice to see what the world would be like if people would express how they really felt instead of what they think they should be saying, you know? Like, that's beautiful. friends guys we are right ah this is the first time he's acknowledged it <laughs> no i'm your friend <gasps> i got a second high five well thanks for sitting with me adam cool. thanks for having me in my room in your <laughs> thank in you my for room. coming to my space <laughs> thanks for me allowing you into my space allowing you to see my art yeah you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> you're supposed to be thanking me you're welcome it's like, and that's all I'm here. It's fine. That's all. That's, all. that's how we're gonna end it. Thanks. <laughs>